in verse 1. I used these verses last week, and we talked about uh, chapter 11 of the faith heroes. But there's an important word that I want to lift out today and talk a little bit about it, and then move on through chapter 12. And the word is therefore. And I know you've heard it said before, is anytime you read the Bible, you see therefore, find out why it is therefore. So, uh, today, this particular therefore is very interesting. In the King James Version of the Bible, therefore is in the New Testament about 350 times. Uh, but if you understand about Greek and Hebrew, it's a very colorful language because they use one word that can mean six words in our language. And so it's, it's very colorful, it takes a picture. And no exception here is that this particular therefore is only used in this original root word, I guess I would say, is only used in the Bible in two places. And there's a reason for it. The other place is in, uh, I believe, if I can look at my notes, I can tell you. So, it's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, therefore, he who rejects this does not reject men, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. These two places where therefore it is, it is a different form, root word of it, and why is what I want to discuss with you this morning. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, to worship you, to uplift the name above every name, and that is Jesus. And may we do so now as we continue to worship you in word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the word therefore, like I said, is 350 times in the, in the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, and it's also found in Hebrews in chapter, beginning chapter 2, 3, 4, and 6, as well as chapter 12. And it's in the middle of chapter 7 and twice in chapter 9. But this particular one is, I guess the way I would describe it, it's a more powerful punch to it. And a lot of times, uh, especially in Paul's writing, he would say something, he goes, do this, therefore this will happen. But in these two particular ones, it's, it's literally wanting to get your attention to stop. I need to tell you something. I need you to pay attention to me right here, right now. And we used it last week in saying, therefore, since we are surrounded with so great a cloud of witnesses. And I've heard so many commentators say that you turn my volume way down. I'm getting a lot of feedback. Actually, right hand side, turn this feedback down. Along the top right, turn it to the left. Sorry, it's bothering me. Now you turn me up. That's where I'm getting all the volume from. Okay. So the one on the far left, turn up. On the board, all the way, number one. Got it? Still not happening. Technical difficulties. <laughs> All right. Senator Perlow. Um, anyway, so the, the, the therefore in these two particular ones are, he's saying, listen to me. And what it was is he was talking about the heroes of faith. And he says, therefore, since we are sur surrounded with these cloud of witnesses, a lot of people think that that's a spectator. Those clouds of witnesses are not spectators. Because if someone goes to heaven and is looking down on you and sees what you go through, all of a sudden they're no longer in heaven because they're seeing your torment and your torture. These are not people that are onlookers. This is a cloud of witnesses of people who have gone on before us to prove that it is able to walk a Christian life. And so he's telling us, listen to me. I've explained all of this to you to get to this one point. Now that you've heard about all of these people, therefore, knowing that you're surrounded with people who show that it is possible through the direst of circumstances to walk a Christian life. I mean, he goes all the way back 
to Aloy, and by the way, I made a mistake, and I know you're shocked about now that I've ever made a mistake, but I did, and, and I'll let you in on it right now. Abel is the fourth person that will walk the earth, not the third, and I said, and Joe said, yeah, I know, you were wrong. So, um, but he was the fourth person to walk the earth, and it goes all the way back to the beginning of time, and using him as an example, and then it comes through Abraham and, and Moses and Noah and all of these saying, hey, no matter what you're going through, these people have gone on before, and guess what? They have not received the promise that was alluded to them in the Old Testament, yet they walked faithfully with God. And then it tells us to shed the sin that so easily besets us. Now that word it beset actually means surrounds us, encompass us, and there's a lot of discussion about what that sin is, and it's the original sin. It's the sin that will separate you from God. It says, listen, set this off, because this sin encompasses you, sort of like has the right to be around you, and it, it, it's this original sin is the barrier that keeps us from having a conversation or a relationship with Christ. He says, so set it aside, so that you can run that race that is set before you. Now, all of this is alluded to the arenas and different games that went on. But the most important thing that I think the writer of Hebrews is trying for you to get to understand, and it starts in chapter 1. He has compared Christ with the angels. Now, one of the conversations that we've had this week is, is someone that believes in energy the energy around them, and, and we laugh. But it's serious, folks. There's people that believe in the worship of angels. There's people that believe in the worship of this or the environment. They're putting off bad vibes. And you know, the book of Hebrews addresses every one of these things. It even addresses that, you know, greater than Aaron is here, the high priest, and greater than Moses is here, greater than Abraham, in which all of these Jewish people looked at as great leaders and great patriarchs of the faith, but they were worshiping these people or these things, and including angels. So he's gotten through all of this writing, and he comes with a cloud of witnesses. He goes, this is the point I've been trying to make to you in this entire book. This is where I want you to pay attention to me. That's why this, therefore, is there. And it is a difference, therefore, than any other in the Bible except for uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. What it is, listen to me. I'm coming to the pinnacle. I'm coming to the end of this letter. And I need for you to pay attention to me. Because what I'm about ready to deliver to you is the pinnacle of your faith. Of your religious beliefs. And what is it? Glad you asked. At least that way I know you're paying attention because you asked. <laughs> so we go on to see here, and it says in, in verse 2, looking unto Jesus, that therefore is a summation, I believe, of the first 11 chapters in saying, I've gone through, I've compared Christ with everything. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that we have a better covenant. We have a covenant of faith. We have a covenant that supersedes anything else that you've ever heard about, been taught about, and that you've even come in contact with. This is a better covenant. Why? Because the works that it takes for salvation has been taken off of your shoulders, placed on Christ, and now it only takes faith. The faith in Christ, who is what? The author and finisher of your salvation. So let me have your attention. We've talked about and we've established everything else before is fallible and no longer exists because the pinnacle of salvation has arrived. And he's died on the cross for you and me. Now, I was smirking when I walked up. And, and there's a reason for that. It's because I'm quite easily entertained with myself and the thoughts that go on in my head. So what I was going to do is, is, is ask everybody to raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. 
Most of you know what your right hand is. That's good. <laughs> you know, we can raise it. You know what? Here's the crazy thing about our church. This is allowed during the singing. I just wanted you to know that. Okay. You all can do it. So as we sing, I don't want to get too carried away. Everybody thinks I'm a positive Pentecostal anyway, so because I get excited about things. And this is okay. <laughs> okay? And that's okay too. Somebody say amen or something? Amen. That's that's allowed too. The reason is is because hey, were you paying attention to the songs we were singing today? Yes. I mean, they were you guys were rolling today. <laughs> And the, the songs and the words that are written are what reason? To glorify Christ. To uplift that person who died on the cross for you and me. So I just wanted you to know that some of you were starting, you were, you were being pretty good Baptist people today because I saw some of you go. <laughs> and I'm kidding you folks. Baptist people start going. Like, like, Sorry to get carried away. But you know what? In the Bible, it talks more about dancing in the presence of the Lord. It talks about getting crazy. And David even said, you know, he, he took off his outer coat. He started dancing in front of, of the Ark of the Covenant because the presence of God was coming back into town. So he was excited because there's something going on. When God shows up, folks, you're going to get on Baptist life occasionally. And that's all right in our church. I'm just giving you permission to get a little crazy, all right? And say amen. 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 There you go. And so it goes too. So those are allowed here. Okay? Why? Because we've been talking about something that has superseded everything else. Because as I started this out, I told you that salvation is by works, and I will prove it to you by the Bible. But the works that salvation is done by is through Christ, not through you. Because the very first man that got created and put on earth, he failed by the works because he could not abstain from. So all of the works of salvation has been done in Christ. And guess what? Something else I need to tell you. It's pretty important. Some of you don't look like you know it. But you're free. Amen. You're no longer guilty for being born in sin. You're free. And guess what? There ain't nothing you can do about it now. <laughs> because once you have accepted Christ, you cannot be refused in the presence of Almighty God. And I tell you what, folks, I've been desperate. I've been here, and, I, and, I, and I'm privileged. I get to live on this campus. This is my prayer closet. Welcome in. Join me in my prayer closet for a while. This is my prayer closet. But I've been here, and I've laid on this floor, and I said, God, I don't understand what's going on. I don't get it. But I do know one thing, and I need to remind you more, I need to remind me, but I'm going to remind you so that I remember because I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and His blood has covered all my sins. You can't refuse me. God, and I'm coming here through my big brother's mission. That's acceptable, folks. It's in the Bible. Right? Jesus is our older brother. So through my big brother's works, you can't refuse I don't care how desperate I feel right now. I don't care how unworthy I feel right now. I don't care what I don't know. Because as Paul told the Corinthians, the only thing I need to know from you is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Nothing else matters. So the writer of Hebrews is getting this big crescendo. He's going, he's gone through and he's taught these lessons and lessons and lessons. He goes, now listen, now that I've told you all that, therefore, listen to me. I need for you to pay attention to me right now. This is the second most important, therefore, in all of the writings that we have. And it's, I've said all of this so that you will come to terms with that Christ, that he in Hebrews paid it all for you. Get rid of that sin. 
that one, that old man that keeps fighting you. And have you truly surrendered? Yes, I know you've been to the altar. And I know you've prayed and you made down and repeat after me. But have you had faith in the blood of Jesus Christ? Have you truly had faith? And at any point in time in your life, now more than ever, shed that sin that so easily besets you. That inner man that is opposed, diametrically opposed to the will of God. Get rid of it. Move forward. Because what I'm trying to tell you, the pinnacle, the author and finisher of your salvation is Jesus Christ. He's done everything for you. All you have to do is accept it. And that's where this is coming to. That's why this word in this particular interpretation is here. The other reason in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 8, he says, therefore, you're not refusing man, but you're refusing God. And what does that mean? Right before it, he, Paul was telling the church of Thessalonica, which was having a problem with all of these things. And he, says, and he named sin. He said fornication and, and adultery and, and hatred and all these things. And he said, by the way, listen to me. When I preach this gospel to you, you can accept it or not. That's your choice. But I want you to understand one thing, and that's why he writes the therefore there as well in the same interpretation as this one, is because, and, you, and I'll say the same thing to you, you can listen to me Sunday after Sunday, and you can accept or reject what I say, but when I'm preaching the word of God and giving it to you, one thing that I've struggled with and I need to understand even more, you're not rejecting me, you're rejecting God. And that's why this is used again in the New Testament is because it's that powerful. It is that much that I need your attention. Everything that the Bible says, you need to obey. Therefore, if you don't, you're not rejecting me. You're rejecting God. And that's the negative side of it in 1 Thessalonians. But here he uses the same word again in Romans. But this is the positive side of it. I've told you all these things because you're stuck in an Old Testament frame of mind. You're stuck in the, in the Judaism way or the Jewish traditions. And, and again, I would say we're stuck in church beliefs. And you need to take all of man's, man's doctrines, man's rules, and church and religion put them in a nice little box and find a incinerator and blow them up because it doesn't work to get to God. It's the Bible. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That is the only way to get to God. It's not about what church you join. It's not about what you do. It's about what you accept. And that's where He's gotten to. He's gotten through all of this. And he says, now, the reason I've said all this is because now I want to draw your attention to Christ. Take that old man's sin. Get rid of it. Get crucified once and for all. And then come to the author and finish of your salvation. This is the pinnacle of our beliefs, folks. And that's what this writer has gotten us to. And that word, therefore, is to say, listen, here it is. This is what I've been talking about. I want to stop you in your tracks. Pay attention to me. Now, also it says to consider Christ. And when we consider, this word consider actually means to sit down, to take grasp a hold of what you're thinking about. It says consider our high priest. He says, I want you in everything that you've ever learned. I want you to put Christ into perspective. I need for you to stop and consider our high priest. Okay? Take it in for a minute. Take in for a minute what Christ has done. The fact that he is the son of God. 
the fact that he took away all of his heavenly authority and pleasures and became man. Consider, listen to me folks, I need you to pay attention. And the writer of Hebrews is just wanting to draw you in. I want to draw you in and understand how powerful of a thing you have in front of you right now. Consider what Jesus gave up for you. Consider who really hung on this cross. Consider what agony, what pain, what stress he went through to make you free. Get your mind around it. And then understand that whosoever calls upon his name will be saved. What's holding you down today? What's keeping you from putting it up? <laughs> What's keeping you from truly serving God today? Every work that you think that's getting you closer to heaven will be burned up because all of our righteousness is like filthy rags. What's keeping you back? The writer of Hebrews has gone through about 13 quills and feathers and ink. I don't know, that's not true. But he's gone through a lot to get to this point for you to understand what has been accomplished for you. For you. For you. For personally, you. Christ knows the numbers of hair on top of your head. So certainly he knows your name. As days go by, Chad makes that job easier. He's losing more and more hair. So it's easier for God to keep up with the number of hairs on top of his head. But isn't that an intimate thought that Christ knows the number of hairs on your head? Scientific fact. I love sharing this one. It's one of my favorite ones. I usually use it around Christmas time. But did you know the blood that was shed on Calvary's tree was the blood of God Himself? Scientific fact. When a fetus is in the womb of the mother, the blood comes from the man's seed. None of the blood from the mother enters the baby or contaminates it. Put your mind around this for a minute. When the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, she put the seed of God inside her womb. So the blood that was shed on Calvary's tree was the blood of God himself for your sin. Folks, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, there is nothing going to trump that card. There is nothing going to beat the blood of God. I mean, sometimes we walk down the road and we're kicking rocks because we're, we're got things going on. But wait a minute. Somewhere, something tells me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Wait, there's, there's something else in another book somewhere that says, He'll never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. Folks, what was accomplished on this cross has come to a pinnacle in the book of Hebrews. They said, Listen, folks, the therefore is almost like a. Let me have your attention. <laughs> well, I, I need you to be looking at me right now, and I need you to understand. That Jesus Christ has trumped anything that you've ever learned about in this cross. In faith, believe and take all of your sins away. And then, all of a sudden, I had a great apostrophe. And I'm speaking Scottsburg really good today. 
had a great epiphany that in there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I don't care how good you screwed it up this week. There's still no condemnation because that blood trumps everything else. And oh, by the way, let's back up a little bit. One more chapter in Romans chapter 7. And when Paul's talking to the bearer of the good that I would do but I can't do, I'm still saved. I'm still saved. Even though I screw it up daily. There's nothing that can separate me from the love of God. There's even a story in a book somewhere about a prodigal son. At what moment was that man not the son of the one looking for him? Never. Once you're born into this family, no matter what you do, you cannot be unadopted. You are always a son. Now, you may take yourself out of the comforts and the pleasures of home, but you are always the son of the living God. And to me, that's what I see here in Hebrews, in those two verses. All of this is just coming in and piling in and saying, let me, let me have your attention. I need you to understand. You can consider this hall of fame of, of all of these people that have done great things. And, and through faith, they did this. And by faith, they believed. And they accepted a promise that they never got to see. And they died without it. Guess what? There's a promise that you have that some of us will die and not see. And that's the second coming of Jesus Christ. But by faith, I will go to my grave believing that Jesus Christ is going to come back and get me. I may have to take a dirt nap. It'll be the first time I sleep more than three hours in a row, so I'm okay with that. So I'm ready. But I know by faith I may not receive that promise in my lifetime. But he who has promised will fulfill. That's where we've come to. This is the culmination. This is that word. That one word in there, therefore, is all about. It's coming here. It's here. Believe in Jesus Christ. And you will be saved. And God himself cannot reject you. Man. Amen. Uh, there you go. Amen. And she had a right hand up at the same time. <laughs> she can chew both of them to walk. <laughs> Folks, it's okay to worship God in this house. Because that is why we're here. We are here to uplift the name of Jesus Christ. We are here to uplift the author and finisher of our salvation. What does that mean? He designed it, and he will accomplish it, and there's nothing you need to do. No works. Just come and say, I believe. I believe. And then raise your hand and say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Folks, this is a good thing. So many times we go into church and it's like, I don't know, it's home drum. Man, I, I just think, I was sitting back here and I was, I was sorry, I was just being entertained the whole day today. I'm like, man, I'm going to run around circles or something. I'm excited about this. Because guess what? I ain't going down. I will never be separated from God. I will never be separated from God. Ever. Because of the works done on the cross for me. For me. Okay, fine, I'll share it with you. For you too. <laughs> if you can accept it by faith, believe in Jesus Christ and that's what the writer of Hebrews is saying hey all of this stuff I just wanted to establish so I can tell you pay attention to me look unto Jesus the author and finisher of your salvation it's been accomplished for you 
you get the privilege of riding his coattail to heaven by faith, accepting Christ, the perfect Son of God, shed the perfect blood of God for your sins. That's where we're at, folks. If I don't light like your fire, your wood's wet. <laughs> How awesome is the God that we have? Don't get me wrong, folks. My, my days aren't always this good. But I struggle. I have my doubts. But that's why God gave us the Bible. It's because sometimes this overpowers truth. And I need to invest time in the Word and be reminded of truth. And my God's greater than anything else. And that victory has already won. Right here. Do you know that? I'm not asking, do you know that? Do you know that? Those years I went to Bible college and I do a lot of things. It just didn't sink down that far for a very long time. That head knowledge won't get you anywhere. It's that heart knowledge and accepting Christ by faith that will change the events of your eternity. Do you know Christ and Him crucified? Let's stand, worship team, come forward. There's no better news I can give you than your sins are forgiven if you have accepted the work of the cross by faith. You have an opportunity, as long as you're breathing, an opportunity to accept Christ. It's not too late. And I'm not talking about you've gone through the motions, done a repeat after me. That's not going to get you to heaven, folks. Only faith. And that's what he's been instituting in this book is to have faith. Faith faith in the cross. I want to give you an opportunity to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the glorious fact of the cross. I want to thank you for the glorious fact that God cannot refuse me because I'm washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Because God promised it and swore by himself because there was nothing greater that he could swear by. And it's by a God who tells me that he lies not. So by faith believing, my eternity is secured through the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise your holy name. And in that precious name I pray. Amen.